as Eagles just two of seven shooting right now, and they missed that free throw. So they're having a hard time finding the range. While the home team is actually only 31% themselves. But they're winning the rebound battle 11 to 5, so they've had some second chance points as that one missed. It's a bugaboo for Benedictine. They've had some really rough shooting nights from the free throw line this year. They missed that one again. They go left side as the Jays. They swing it around right. That's number one. Kelly Barnett, who's in the game now. 6'4 sophomore from Gary, Indiana, and a whistle there. And I'll bring it in. Side court left. Sanford to do the honors. There they go in the corner. 12 on the shot clock now. They're going to have to start to get something going here with McCurdy. Down to eight. Barnett down to five. And a shot rejected. And they're going to call an offensive foul anyway as A.J. Brown got knocked over. So good half-court defense that trip for Benedictine. They get the ball back. But they have to figure out a way to score some points now. As we've played seven and a half minutes, and they have five points to show for it. Down 13-5 with Green up top now. To Brown. He'll drive. He'll baseline. Now back out, Tribble. Back to Brown. 15 on their shot clock, and going to call a foul there on Elmhurst's Aaron Schrader, I think he stuck the knee out there in the baseline. That's what the call's going to be. But that Benedictine will make a substitution. Brown will get a breather. And they're going to bring in Brian Genslinger, 6'7", senior out of Caneland High School. And Crane will come back in at the post for Elmhurst. Try to get it to Genslinger, but it's knocked away and stolen away. Jay's on the run. McCurdy, a long jumper, no good. A rebound, Crane will keep it alive. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Again, on the pass, after it was let go, Terry Licht got run over and got position to draw the charge. So fifth team foul, second personal on McCurdy, and the Eagles get it back. But have that same five points they've had for quite a while now. Fortunate in a sense that they're only down eight. Green lost the dribble. Well, got it back as it was knocked away from him. So now he'll drive, and that's going to be the third personal on McCurdy. As Green drove hard and drew the contact and the whistle. So it'll be his third already, so he has to come out. And Foster comes back in for the Jays. Green will bring it in right baseline. Way up top. For the three, that is no good. Rebound battle for last touched by who? That will be Blue Jay basketball. So Lick tried the three, didn't get it. And the game for Benedictine is 23 Alvin Jackson, 6'2 junior from Detroit, Michigan. Fendley back in for the Jays, and he has it in the backcourt. 13 to 5 still, with now 11, 22 to go in the half. Barnett, back up Foster. And let's swing it around, right corner Sanford. Perimeter passing around that 2 3 zone of the Eagles right now. Back to the point, down to 10 on the shot clock. Fendley. Sanford, now they go for the long three that won't go, but the long rebound will eventually track down by Jackson of Benedictine. In the corner, Jackson will take the three, miss it, long rebound, tracked down by Elmhurst. Wow, the uh, Eagles just cannot buy a hoop right now. 25% from the floor right now for the Eagles. But tell you what, home team's not much better. They're actually 28%. That's why it's a low-scoring affair with 10-20 to go in the half, just 13-5. to 
Crane with it low right. Tries to spin, move against Genslinger. Couldn't get loose. He finds a teammate. Good to the assist as Barnett puts it in. 15 to 5. Snelling. Again, he's been a non-factor so far. Licked is open. He'll take the three. Miss it. And the rebound comes down to Elmhurst. Boy, they just cannot buy a bucket. Foster. Barnett. In the corner in Sanford. Fake the three. It's perimeter passing again, pretty much. As they run that clock down as they'd like to do and drive into the basket. Initial shot no good. The miss by Barnett. Rebound Benedictine and Terry Licht. Snelling for the open three on the wing. In and out. Rebound Jays. Well, that's the other thing too is they've been one and done every time. It's going to be a 30 second timeout by Elmhurst. So 9.18 to go in the half and it's 15 to 5. Elmhurst out in front, and the numbers aren't all that pretty, period, really. So 2 of 11 shooting now for Benedictine. That's 18%, while the home squad is 6 out of 20, 30%. In threes, Benedictine 1 out of 6, home team 2 out of 6. Free throws, Benedictine 0 for 2. Jays are one out of one. Turnovers, four for the Eagles, three for Elmhurst. Rebounds, boy, this is all Blue Jays in that category. Elmhurst leads in rebounds 17 to 7 here in the early going, which is why they have this 10-point lead because of second-chance points. Because, again, they're not shooting all that well either, but they've had extra chances at it. They bring in number five in the game, James Robertson. 6-3 junior from Peoria Richwoods. The three will not go for Fendley in the rebound Eagles. Nate Green tries to drive, gets stopped, so out to Licht. In the game now for Benedictine as well. That's number 11, David Bernard. 6-2 junior from Las Vegas. Well, again, they come away empty, and it's the Blue Jays with it. Fendley. Goes in the corner. Now he gets it back. And what are they going to call? I think they're going to call Genslinger for a hold, trying to keep Crane away from getting a pass down low, and that is indeed the case. Jokic in, Jackson out for Benedictine. So championship game of this tournament. We've had three really good games and fun games to watch. This one, you need to pick up the pace a bit. The three there, no good. And Genslinger the rebound off the miss by Robertson. Genslinger for three, got it, Genslinger. Well, they needed to find somebody with the range. And Genslinger, good outside shooter. Despite his 6'7 size, he can hit from long range and does so there to make it 15-8. to eight. They're still in it, despite their really rough start. Because they've played some good half-court defense here against the Jays. they really made Elmhurst work for everything they've gotten so far. The drive, knocked away by Green, and I think they're going to call a foul on Elmhurst trying to get it back. I think Acosta, who lost it, then reached in trying to get it back, and they whistle him for the personal. Yep, that is the case. And that's the seventh team foul, so we'll walk the other way. Benedictine only has three, but that's seven now on EC, so it'll be Green to the line. For the Eagles. So Nate at the line. And he missed it. So they've missed their first three free throws. And Elmhurst, well, Benedictine caught a break because Acosta was falling out of bounds when he got the rebound. So he did touch the out of bounds line. And Benedictine gets it back. And Crane will come out. Eric Dornfeld will come in. 6'7", 210, sophomore from Geneseo High School. Inbounds to Jokic. Couldn't pull the trigger, so has to pass it away. To Green, up Genslinger. 
to Licht. He'll penetrate. Then she green, low left. The fadeaway, long deuce is no good, but then he's fouled as falling back into green. That time was Robertson. It's one of those where you want to block out the shooter as soon as he lets it go, but you can't be too aggressive on that. I think that's what happened. He backed into green a little too quickly, a little too aggressively, and knocked him down. And that one is good, so they finally get a free throw to go, and 15-9. to nine. And that free throw good as well. I mean, if you try to block a guy out before he's actually landed from his jump shot, you're going to knock him down every time and draw the foul. You've got to wait pretty much till he lands before you really can body up on him and push him backwards and not knock him over. So 15 to 10, Eagles within five. Dornfeld, contact there against Genslinger on the whistle. So second on Genslinger and two shots coming for Dornfeld. And I'll tell you what, all the teams in this tournament, despite being Division Three, they've got a ton of size. That's not necessarily always the case in D3, as that free throw is good. On Elmhurst, they've got four six sevens and a six nine. Benedictine's got a few six sevens and a six six, but in the previous game there are a whole bunch of six eights and six tens. Don't see that a whole lot in D3, I'll tell you. That one goes. So he makes them both. They're back up by seven. But low scoring affair right now, 7-10 to go in the half, and it's just 17-10. to 10. Jokic for three. No, and the rebound comes down to Elmhurst. Now, they hadn't really squared to that one. That wasn't really in the flow and couldn't get it. I go top of the key to Boyd. Benedictine said done a nice job to keep him away from being much of a factor, although Boyd has missed the shots he's been able to take so far. They go baseline, good double team, so he has to pass it back up top. Nine on the shot clock now for Foster. Acosta will drive. He'll take the jump shot blocked by Genslinger to Boyd, who just flings it to the basket. Hits the rim, but Genslinger the rebound. So, again, good half-court defense there by the Eagles. As the Jays come up empty. Facing now is Snelling. He'll drive, spin. No, nothing there, so back outside to Genslinger. Now Green. Good help defense there by the Jays. Tribble. He'll try to drive. Pull-up jumper. Good for Jarrell Tribble. Well, Eagles hanging around. They're within five now. Inside six minutes for the half. And considering they've only shot 21%, they have to be feel pretty fortunate they're still in this thing, mainly because their opposition's only shooting 25%. Long two-pointer there will not go. And the rebound, Cam Snelling off the tip of Green. So Fenley on the miss, and Green will hustle down. That have it knocked away from him. Good job by Deontay Foster to pick Nate's pocket. And the Jays come back on offense. High right there for Dornfeld. Now Boyd gets it. Fenley, and finally timeout call by Elmhurst. They could tell they weren't really getting anywhere in that half court set again, and they've had a few too many times in half court where they haven't really gotten anywhere, so that time they want to drop a play and see if they can get a shot with now 12 on the shot clock and 5.09 on the game clock for the half. So 17-12, Jays by just five, and again, those numbers... Well, after the last basket for the Eagles, they're at a 4 of 15, 27%. Elmhurst, 6 of 25, 24%. Both teams, 2 of 8 from beyond the arc, which is 25%. So, that's been all that pretty right now, though. The Jays, 3 of 3 in free throwing. Eagles, 2 of 5. Turnovers, 5 for Benedictine, 4 for Elmhurst. And again, Elmhurst dominating on the boards, leading that category 20 to 12. So, Jay's with it. 
Now 10 on the shot clock. Foster. Up top now. It's five on the shot clock. Then some trouble there. Sanford had nowhere to go. Now it's Foster with two. One. He'll fling it up. And it missed everything. So it's a shot clock violation. Eagles possession. Well, they've stayed in this game, Benedictine has. Thanks to their half-court defense. And a chance now to get within five here. Most of they would have been in a long, long time if they can get a bucket here. Green with it. No penetrate. Stop, slide, have it blocked from behind. Nice job by Sanford to come in and reject it. Blue Jays coming back. They go high right to Boyd with it. Foster. Now low right baseline. Trying to back in there, Dornfeld. Boyd will miss the outside jumper. Snelling the rebound. Eagles try to run. They haven't been able to do much of that today because they haven't really had too ma that many rebounds to try it. And then Snelling steps out of bounds when he goes baseline. Like I say, finally got a rare chance to run and didn't get the shot away. So Jays keep the five-point lead. Bring it front with Eric Ellingson. Now they go Foster. Up top, Boyd. Free throw line, Dornfeld. Hand off Boyd, and they throw it away in the corner. The turnover, back to the Eagles. Well, this is not the prettiest basketball game you'll ever see. And it will be Crane back in the game for Elmhurst. Boyd will come out. Boy, I'll tell you what, Boyd has had a real rough go of it. He came in at 17 a game, but he is now 0 for 7 from the floor. Green, triple for three. No, rebound Crane for Elmhurst. They have just ruled the boards. Still 17 to 12, though. Again, it's anybody's ball game if anybody can finally get a hot streak going. 3.30 for the half. Foster. Well, the Benedictine coach there was asking for the five count, and he never got it. As Foster was never really getting anywhere against Green, and Coach Bunkenberg was saying, where's the five count? And finally, again... But their offense not making any headway against the BU defense. They called timeout to talk about it. 16 on the shot clock. 3-16 for the game clock, and it's still 17 to 12. My goodness. So individually, point-wise, well, I haven't really mentioned much about points because there haven't been that many. I mean, it's hard to talk about a leading scorer when on the Elmhurst side, your leading scorer has six points. That's Fendley. And then Crane has five. On the Benedictine side, your leading scorer has four. It's Nate Green. And then Brown and Genslinger have three and triple with two. So individual-wise, not a whole lot to talk about. Well, Rebound-wise, three different Blue Jays have four already. Crane, Boyd, and Foster have four rebounds apiece. That's the one category that there's enough things to add up. So Jays will have it. So down to 15 on the shot clock. Foster. Up to Crane. It's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Crane, the long two. No good. Rebound. Comes down to Cam Snelling, and the Eagles on the run. The pass to Brown, he wasn't looking. It went over his head, but Eagles catch a break as Foster touched it last, and Eagles will have it. And it will be Tribble to bring it in. 2.59 for the half. Green for three. No. Rebound comes down to Elmhurst. Another one and done for the Eagles. Well, this is the championship game of this tournament. It might not look like it, but it is. Brown fouls Crane from behind there, trying to deny that pass down into the block. 
But they've got a long way to go yet, so. It's certainly a close one, and it's going to be a heck of a battle, but let's see if it can get a little prettier or not. New shot clock for the Jays. They'll bring it in baseline right. Try to get the inbounds to Crane, but there's going to be an offensive foul. Going to call a hold on Ellingson. So Eagles will get it back. Brown will come out. Genslinger back in for Benedictine. 17 to 12, Elmhurst, 240 to go in the half. And again, these are teams that can put points on the board, for goodness sake. Especially Benedictine. As Green will drive go all the way. Gets fouled. He'll shoot two. Benedictine has scored in the 80s quite a bit in this season. Elmhurst a little more deliberate. They usually score in the 70s. But I'm not sure anybody's going to get to barely 60 <laughs> considering it's 70 to 12 right now with 2.32 to go in the half. As the free throw is good for Nate Green. So 17-13. Elling sent out. Finally back in for the Blue Jays. And that one good. So they are actually now within three. Put a little pressure on. Trying to pick up the pace in this game, maybe. But Blue Jays will break it easily into Foster. And he's going to take the 15-footer knocked away from him. They're going to call the foul. And that means that Foster will be at the line to shoot two there. Well, I think I heard Coach Bunkenberg all the way from up here who said that was a pass, not a shot. But... <laughs> It's going to be two shots coming for Foster regardless. On the way and got it. 18-14. Tell you what, Elmhurst, not sure how long that drought lasted, but they were stuck on 17 for a long, long time. And that one no good. Rebound back tap to Jokic for Benedictine. So Jays by four. Green will drive middle, pull up, jumper from 10 in the paint is good. He goes within a deuce now at 18-16. Fendley, high left side, that was Barnett, didn't have it for long, because now Crane has it, free throw line. Tries to drive, knocks down the defender, the Genslinger, who's going to be whistled for the foul. He just didn't move the feet quickly enough. Gets knocked down and draws the foul. And Crane to the line to shoot two. So Crane. Well, wait while substitution is made. Terry Licht is in for Genslinger. As that was the third foul on Genslinger. And that one is good. So one more coming for Crane. Takes his time. And puts it right on in. And with that, he will come out. Aaron Schrader comes back in for him. 158 for the half, and Jays by four. Tribble. Free throw line, Snelling. Back outside now. The Snelling, I thought it was going to be a three. A little unselfishly passed it to Green, who wasn't ready. But he gets it back anyway, and Green will miss the three in the corner. Good aggressive play on Snelling, trying to get the rebound, but they're actually going to call the foul on him for doing so. So Snelling whistled for the foul. And we'll walk the other way with now 136 to go in the half. Gee, Jays by four. Jays. 
Nick Sanford, 6'4 freshman from Decatur at the line. Four points a game for him as he will miss that one and Snelling gets the rebound. They're down four. Green will start the offense against the 2-3 zone. Well, Jokic have not been able to get him going either, and he's a very good three-point shooter, but he's been taken out of this game. The three by Licht, though, is good. Terry Licht hits the three to make it a one-point game at 20-19. to As we approach one minute to play in this half. Looking down low, can't find anybody, so up top to Barnett. Fendley will have it knocked away from him by Green. He'll take it all the way, lay it up, and in. And Benedictine gets their first lead of 21 to 20 with now 45 seconds to go in the half. Fendley, right side. And they come up top. Now try the other corner, and they throw it away. Off the fingertips of Barnett, and the Eagles now have a one-point lead and the ball with 32.9 to go in the half. Now this one has been a grind. It looks like it will be a grind the rest of the way. So they can take the last shot. Looks like they will do so. As Green just stands way up top of that zone that they have not come out of at all. Run it down to 14 seconds. 10. 7. He's still standing there with it. 4. Snelling lays it up and in. And that'll be it. And Benedictine will enter the halftime locker room with a lead of 23 to 20. Well, who would have predicted that after the early minutes of this half? As slowly as the Eagles came out of the gate. But then the Blue Jays never really could pull away because they were doing a whole lot better shooting-wise. As we take a look at the halftime numbers, Benedict Benedictine actually was able to pick up the pace while Elmhurst never really did get in gear. Because you look at it now, and Benedictine is 8 of 23, which is not exactly outstanding, but 35%, which turns out to be a lot better than Elmhurst who is 6 of 28, only 21%. Benedictine, only 3 of 12 from beyond the arc, 25%. But Elmhurst, not that good. 2 of 9, that's 22%. Free throws. Eagles, 4 out of 7. Jay is 6 out of 8. Turnovers, 8 for the Blue Jays, 6 for Benedictine. So even though Elmhurst leads in rebounds, 24 to 16, the fact that they have two more turnovers than the Eagles and they're only shooting 21% means the fact that even though they led for the majority of the half, they go to the locker room now trailing it 23 to 20. The individual numbers in the first half will give you Benedictines first since they're now out in front. Well, Nate Green has been the story. He has 10 on... Actually, only three of eight shooting, but he's been fouled enough to go four or five from the stripe to help out his cause. He has three assists and a couple of rebounds, two steals as well in the first half of play. So ten points for Nate Green. But after that, you have to go all the way down to three. Terry Licht, A.J. Brown, and Brian Genslinger with three apiece. And then two for Jarrell Tribble, two for Cameron Snelling. On the... Elmhurst College side of things. Their leading scorer is Steve Crane with seven. After that, six for Sean Fendley. And then after that, you have to actually go to two. Eric Dornfeld is two, as does Joe Acosta and Bailey Barnett. Then you go to one for Deontay Foster. So not exactly an artistic success in half number one, but Close ball game, which means we should have a heck of a second half here. It looks like it's going to go down to the wire. As right now, Benedictine leads at the break in a low-scoring affair, 23-20. to 20. Again, the third-place game, Calvin College wins that one, and we're here in the title game here 
of the Blue Jay Classic here at Elmhurst. I'm Mark Vasco. Again, we are at the half. We'll take a break here for a few minutes and why don't you come back in probably about 10 minutes or so and we'll get ready for the beginning of the second half. But again, Benedictine up by three at the break. We'll come back in just a few minutes. with athletics in school it's just with me I did it all throughout high school so it was I needed to do sports in order to stay focused. I run cross country in the fall and track in the spring. I was injured my freshman year and I just felt like so off track. It didn't feel natural like I think a lot of the students coming from high school and coming to D3 it's like what they need to stay focused. I mean if you could do it in high school you could do it here. The bigger schools you don't have the the coach time like you do here. You can just join the team and just have fun. We actually just went to Tennessee for a spring break trip so it was different. It was a lot of fun being able to travel. We had two first place finishes so it was kind of impressive. It's nice having like that other family aside from like you know being at home because you're with them all the time. Don't be afraid to go out there and try new things. So welcome back to Elmhurst College. This is the Blue Jay Classic Tournament Championship game. We are at the half, and it is a three-point lead for Benedictine. 23-20 to 20 is your score. Again, I'm Mark Vasco here for, again, the, uh, the final half of the tournament. One game already in the books today. Calvin College got themselves to win in the consolation game, and now we're here in the championship contest. Not necessarily a thing of beauty so far, but nevertheless, close game that should go down to the wire here like all the other games have basically done, and of course these two teams got here thanks to some, some thrillers right down to the wire yesterday, and see how they do here today with one more half to go. So again, 23-20. to 20. Benedictine has the lead. Elmhurst trying to even their overall record. They're at 4-5 and five right now. Benedictine right now at 6-4, and four, trying to go three games over 500 before both teams get back to their respective conferences and conference play. And Benedictine in the Northern Athletics Conference and Elmhurst in the CCIW. So they'll break the huddles, looking at the Jays in the white. Benedictine in the red as they take the floor. Looks like they will have the ball to start the half with their three-point edge. Again, a low-scoring affair, 23-20. to 20. Neither team shooting all that well from the field. See if anybody heats up, if anybody can make a run. Again, Eagles just 35% shooting. Elmer's just 21% shooting so far in this game. And it's Nate Green having it for BU. Here we go. Green will drive, stop, spin. Go up to Brown, who banks it up and in. A.J. Brown with the basket. Eagles now with their biggest lead of the night at 25-20. to 20. Elmer's back the other way. Acosta right wing. Trying to get it to Crane down low. Finally does in the bounce pass. And Crane going to work against Brown. The fade away in the paint. Misses it. Rebound. Comes down to the Jays. Tribble actually had the position. Just couldn't get the ball. As it's Acosta now. Back up top. Are they swinging around? Low right to Crane again. Take the three, miss that one, and triple the rebound for Benedictine as McCurdy couldn't get it to go. McCurdy, three quick fouls in this game and didn't play much in the first half. Starts the second half as Green throws it away, tried to get it to Brown, went through his hands. I think that pass had just a little too much on it. And we'll go back the other way. So Elmhurst comes front with Fendley. Left side, Boyd, who again, Boyd came in as this team's leading scorer, 17 points a game, and he has yet to make a shot in this game. He is 0 for 7. They really need to get him going. Acosta will drive, bank it up, no. Brown the rebound for the Eagles. Green, lob it underneath. Cam Snelling mixes the shot down low, gets fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two, and... Well, Snelling came in as his team's leading scorer. Well, actually, Green at 16 and Snelling at 14. But that's another guy that needed to get going. I think he only had two in the first half. Snelling came in at 14. And that free throw short. And 
Still 25-20. See if he makes it a six-point lead here. And he does not. He missed them both. So, again, free throws have been their nemesis all year long. And it's their nemesis again here today. And that one knocked away by Snelling. It's the steal. Green, it's a three-on-one. Cam Snelling. Oh, he missed a dunk. Unbelievable. He missed a dunk. Wow. Well, that's the way this game has gone basically on both sides today. <laughs> they get a three-on-one fast break. They've been waiting all day for that. And they get the open shot and miss the slam. The Jays had a chance to run Benedictine out of the gym in the first half. They just couldn't make enough shots after they got out to a good start. Basically opened the door for the Eagles who went through. And now another steal by Snelling, but you know, Crane saves it right back for him. And Boyd misses another shot. But Crane another offensive rebound, but then a steal by Green. And, well, that's a pretty good foul actually in the backcourt because that was a 2 one none. Likely going to be an easy basket, but McCurdy, the thing for him, though, that's his fourth. I mean, they needed that foul to stop their breakaway, but just not from him. As he has to sit with personal foul number four, and Foster comes back in for him. Yeah, this one's not going to go into the, uh, the how-to video file, but... Still going to be one. Go down to the wire as Snelling takes a three and hits it. Well, he misses the dunk and hits the three. That's how that works. And 28 to 20, it's now their biggest lead. Acosta, the crane. Tries to back in against Brown. Uses the offhand, misses it. Snelling the rebound. They're on the run again. It's a three on two if they hurry. Tribble, baseline jumper good. Well, they're starting to get some momentum on offense now. And their lead is 10. And now you start having to look at the Elmhurst offense. For the longest time, as the Jays called timeout, they've got to figure out a way to start scoring now. Because now that the Eagles have started to score, 30-second timeouts will keep it here. They have to figure out a way to get the ball in the hoop before this thing gets away from them now as they're down 30 to 20 with 17.03 to play. I mean, their numbers now, Elmhurst is shooting 18% from the floor. That's unbelievable. And Benedictine is up to 41%, 11 of 27. Meanwhile, Elmhurst, what, six of 33? And they're only 2 of 10 from beyond the arc. Eagles are 4 of 13. Now free throws, Benedictine is only 4 out of 9. Did you see that next game tomorrow night, 1 o'clock? That's a women's contest. Tim Calderwood will have that for you here at BlueJTV.com. And again, Coach Scherer trying to figure something out for his Blue Jays. But yeah, Eagles only 4 of 9 in free throw shooting while Elmhurst is six out of eight, but Jays have 10 turnovers to the Eagles' seven. But if you're only gonna shoot 18%, it's hard to beat anybody. They have got to find a way to score now. And they bring it in here. Well, before that, not quite sure what that was about. I think they wanted to make sure about the shot clock. It stands at 27, and that's where it is as we go here. Right side to Boyd. Again, he has not hit a shot yet. They go baseline. And rejected by Cam Snelling. Right to Jarrell Tribble. Three on one break. Jarrell runs. Knocked away from him. Brown saves it. Goes up. Puts it in. A.J. Brown. All of a sudden, defense starting to create some offense for the Eagles, who now lead by 12, 32 to 20. Foster to Boyd. Nothing there on the other side for Sanford, so they'll take the shot, miss that one. Boyd, another miss. And Green the rebound. Jokic for three. Missed it. Rebound, Jays come down with it. Foster, 
And quick hands by Cam Snelling to knock it out of bounds. And again, slow them down from getting into their offense. Got to give the Eagles credit because, again, when they started out so slowly offensively, they picked up the effort defensively, and it kept them in the game long enough now to make their run and take a lead. The Jays have not been able to get untracked on the offensive side. Sanford to Boyd, the jumper wide open, missed another one. Rebound, volleyballed around. Boy, nice job by A.J. Brown to tip it back to Cameron Snelling. So Eagles. Green. Spin move, nothing there. So back up to Brown, the long jumper good. A.J. Brown again, as we said, good range for a center. Hit that one. It's a 14-point Benedictine lead. Boyd is now 0 for 10 from the field. Foster, the jumper, no. Rebound green. Jokic underneath the Snelling. Good job, though. Boyd still playing his defense despite his struggling day on the offensive end. Good job to step in front. Steal that away for Boyd. Boyd has it left wing. Swinging around right side. Underneath right baseline, the shot is good. Schrader, and their long drought ends, and it's 34 to 22. They cut the deficit to 12. Timeout called by Benedictine. So the Eagles want to talk things over. They'll take a full, so we will as well. So it's 14.40 to go in the basketball game. Benedictine leads Elmhurst 34 to 22. We'll take this break. We'll come back after this. It's tough trying to balance homework and practice, but I feel like our coaches stress academics to a point where you have to succeed. I'm actually a hometown kid. I grew up in Elmhurst. When the football team approached me, it was kind of like a lock, you know? I get to go to school in my hometown, play football. When you get to play something that you love, along with getting that education, it's priceless. Coming here, I was just surprised at um, how close everybody is on campus. I know pretty much everybody in terms of athletics on the campus. You will not want to leave this place come senior year. I'm going to live up this last year that I got for everything that's worth. So Mark Vasco back here at Elmhurst College. Benedictine with a 12-point lead and the ball. And Benedictine will bring in Alex Edmondson. He'll bring in the ball. He's a freshman from Wabansi Valley High School. Gets it up to green. Also Terry Licht back in the game. Along with Brian Genslinger who has it now. Three fouls for Genslinger though. Let's see what happens there. As it's green. Dribbles it off his foot as Foster did a great job to hassle him. But then a great hustling play by Licht. Eventually Edmondson hustles. He dives in. Diving in for the Blue Jays was Sanford. And after all that is said and done, it's Blue Jay basketball. Well, again, both these teams hustling. The ball might not be falling very often, but they're playing hard. The drive down the middle. They're going to call the block. As James Robertson drives the middle. One of those that could have gone either way, but it goes to the blocking foul. And it is Edmondson who tried to draw the charge. He picks up the block and Robertson at the line. That free throw good. They try to get back within 10 here. Long way to go yet. 14, 16 remains in this tournament championship game. And that one good. So 34-24. Up top, Genslinger. Right side, Tribble. Green will drive left baseline, lay it up around, and no, but a foul. Now, I thought that actually also should have been goaltending, but I think they're just going to say a foul on that one in two shots. Because I thought that block also 
the player hit the rim and the backboard, I think, with his hand, but <laughs> they're going to get away with it. And it's going to be two shots for Nate Green here. And the free throw is good. Cam Snelling in, Edmondson out after a quick breather for him. And that one is around and in. So 36-24, they're back up by 12 with 14 minutes remaining. They go left wing with it. On the baseline, they get it underneath. Shot blocked again by Cam Snelling, and he takes it away. Three on one break. Cam in the middle to Green, who lays it up and in. And again, defense creates offense for the Eagles, who now lead it by 14. Right side for Sanford. Back up Foster and around to Barnett. Sanford to Robertson, perimeter passing. Foot on the line, it's a long two there for Barnett. The long deuce for him. So again, back to a 12-point game. Green. All right. Picks up the dribble, finds Genslinger, drives the lane, lays it up. No, but a foul and two shots for Bryant. Robertson picks up the foul. So Genslinger to the stripe. Well, offensively, on the Elmhurst side, your leading scorer is still Crane with seven, and he's only played... You know, sparingly in this one, basically. Is that free throw no good? He did start. He usually only averages about 18 minutes a game. He's online for about that tonight. One out of two there for Genslinger. As Eagles side, it's Green with 14. Brown has nine. As some pressure and coming to help out there finally. They finally get the ball in the front court thanks to Schrader. Now Foster. Right side, Sanford. Tries to drive against Licht and cannot, so back up top. Now left side, Foster. Now off the foot there of Barnett, but he tracks it down. But the shot clock down to 10 now. He'll drive all the way in and bank it home. The basket by Barnett. 11-point eagle lead. 12-25 remains. Green with it. Snelling will drive. The contact is made. Yep, blocking foul there as Nick Sanford picks up that whistle. Second on him, team number five. Eagles only have one foul in this half so far. Triple brings it in to Genslinger, puts it right up. No, his own rebound back up and in. Genslinger stuck with it. And he gets the rebound in the basket. And their lead, 41 to 28. How about the fact that we've played 28 minutes now and the Eagles have only given up 28 points. That's pretty impressive. Yes, the Jays have missed a bunch of shots, but you still have to give the defense of the Eagles some credit there. Barnett. Robertson. Back Sanford. Robertson, the quick three, will not go, and the rebound comes down to Terry Licht. And now Tribble. Licht will take the three, in and out. Oh, but offensive rebound, Cam Snelling puts it in. Well, the rebound numbers have got to be getting a little closer as well here now. It was all Blue Jays as far as rebounds earlier. Not anymore. 43-28, almost another steal there. Barnett, the long deuce, short, and the rebound comes down triple. Guess what? The rebounds are now 29 for the Blue Jays, 28 for the Eagles. And they had led by 10 or more rebounds earlier in the game. Now they're going to lead in rebounds by one. Well, the Eagles are up to 46% shooting. Jays are 
Genslinger. Knocked away from him. Let's see. It's going to stay Eagle Ball, though. It's going to be five fresh bodies here for the Blue Jays. So five out, five on. With 10.51 to go and a 43-28 Eagle lead. Green. Now running out of time. Gets it in now to finally Terry Lick there. Run to Snelling. Licked in the right corner for three. No. Rebound Brown. Well, Crane, Crane just went over the top of him and pulled that one down. Good board for Crane. Didn't have position. Didn't matter. Got it anyway. Now they're going to call blocking foul as Acosta lowered the shoulder. Got the bucket and a chance for a three-point play there. So good hard drive to the hoop. But Acosta pays off for him. He'll try to make it a 12-point game again if he can hit the free throw. And Licht will come out. Dario Jokic will come back in. That's Again, he's their three-point guy, and he has not been able to get on track himself here today. There's that one. No good. Rebound. Brown had a hand on it and finally tripled. Here in the Eagle... Eagles come again. Left corner, Jokic for three. Got it, yep. Came off the bench, gets an open three, and he hits it. You know, for him, it was only a matter of time, and 46 to 30 now for Benedictine. Fendley, up top of Costa. Now to Boyd. And Green, a steal again. Oh, did he stay in bounds? He did not. That was going to be a breakaway basket, but tried to tiptoe the sideline. Stepped out. Jays, fortunate for them, they get it back. Well, you wonder when Boyd last had a game where he was 0 for 10. Full timeout for Benedictine. This time we'll keep it here. 10.05 for the ball game. It's a 16-point Benedictine lead at 46 to 30. But again, that's pretty impressive. We played 30 minutes and they've allowed 30 points. That's, again, got to give some credit to that defense today for making it tough for the half-court offense of the Blue Jays. Again, shooting-wise for the Blue Jays, just 23% overall, and they're just 2 of 11 from beyond the arc, and that's 18%. So they're 80% from the stripe, 8 of 10. Just right now not enough at this point in the game. Again, overall, they still have a leading scorer with 7. Again for Benedictine, it's 14 right now for Green. Nine for A.J. Brown. And tell you what, Cam Snelling, only has seven points for him today. But again, working hard on the glass, he has ten rebounds now. So he's three points away from a double-double. Of course, he had that last night as well in the first game of this tournament. Again, Cam Snelling had a really good one. He had... A big night of 22 points and 12 rebounds in that one yesterday. So he might not get the points today, but he's getting the boards again. As Boyd throws it up around and out. And a foul, and he'll shoot too. So he's now 0 for 11. But he will have a chance for some points here. Foul is the third on A.J. Brown. So Boyd, with zero points, does have five rebounds and two steals, though. So it's not like he's... Struggled overall today, but boy, it does even miss the free throw. That's, that's a rough, rough day for your team's leading scorer. It's 17 a game. He still has zero with 9.55 remaining. Well, he made that one, so he's finally on the board here today. But his team is down 15. Nate Green. Lob over the top to Cam Snelling. Crane was able to get back and get a hand on it. And the Jays will come back. Fendley for three in the right corner. No good. Rebound. Boyd, nice job to go over the top and get it. 
Green knocked it away, and he knocked it off of Boyd's knee. Nice job by Nate to get the ball back for the Eagles. 9.33 to go. So Nate will bring it front. A.J. Now it's Jokic with it. Nate comes to get it on the left wing. Green looking down low for A.J. Can't really get him, so he'll just drive right by. Go all the way, throw it up around no. Rebound battled around, volleyballed, and finally Acosta comes down for the Jays. They'll drive, go all the way. Acosta lays it up and in. Well, 46 to 33. There's still a long way to go yet. 850 remains. So if you're the Eagles, you can't stop scoring here. Well, they try a little back door, but it's stolen away. The drive. Basket. McCurdy with his four fouls back in the game because they can't afford to sit him any longer. And he comes up with a big basket there. So we talked about defense creating offense. Did so that time for Elmhurst. Now they lead by Benedictine, trim to 11. Again, eight and a half minutes, long way to go yet. Green. Up top, Jokic. Back green. A lot of standing around right now for them. They need to get something going here offensively. Yep, everybody's standing. Green is open. Didn't take the shot, now he'll drive. Kick it outside to Brown, and let's see. I think it was touched by the Blue Jays, so... He goes, we'll keep it, but just nine on the shot clock now, and they'll bring it in from the corner. A.J. will take the shot, and hit it, A.J. Brown. Well, his long jumper, he's had the range here today. He hits another one, and their lead back to 13. The drive by McCurdy, throws it up. No, but he draws the foul on A.J., and... I think that'll be his fourth. Yep, that'll be the fourth on AJ, so that means that Brown will come out and Licht will come back in. Oh, I was wrong. Actually, just the third. He's still going to come out, though, I think, in the next opportunity. Well, yeah, well, now they corrected it. I was right after all. <laughs> now they put the four on the, on the board for fouls. So it is his fourth. As the free throw is good by Mike McCurdy. Junior from Burlington Central. Brown is out. Licked is in. 48-36. Waiting for Lick to tuck in the jersey. Well, now we're ready. And got it. Now the lead now. Back to just 11 for the Eagles. And it's Green with it. Snelling will drive. Lean in, bank it up. No, his own rebound. Back up again. No, but a foul. He'll shoot two. So Cam Snelling to the line to shoot a pair. Acosta picks up his third, sixth team foul. Benedictine has five of them. And Snelling at the line for the free throw that's short. Boy, their free throws, they just continue to struggle with those. Again, they've done that all year, though. This is not the first time that's happened. Missed another one. Oh, but they get an offensive rebound by Jarrell Tribble to save them. Now they're 50%, 7 of 14 from the line. Licht puts it in. Good feed. Get the ball to him close to the hoop. And Terry Licht eventually gives him the two points thanks to the huge offensive rebound off the missed free throw. Elmhurst down by 13 again. The drive. Acosta throws it up. No. Rebound. Benedictine. Outlet to Snelling. And he tipped it off of McCurdy. And Eagles will have it at midcourt. We approach seven minutes remaining. So it's Nate Green. 
They'll just stand there and they'll run some clock here. No reason not to, especially since no one's going to come out on them. You may as well shorten the game a bit here. 15 on the shot clock. I mean, when you've got a 13-point lead and the ball, why not? 11 on the shot clock. Nate will drive, especially if they let you. He'll go all the way. Shot rejected. He gets it back. Five on the shot clock. He'll fling it up. No, and the rebound comes down to the Blue Jays. Well, ran a lot of clock. They just didn't get the ball to fall. Back the other way. McCurdy will drive. Oh, a great athletic move there to bank it in for McCurdy. Not an easy one there at all. And again, their deficit trimmed to 11. Green with it. Snelling. Low left, licked. Spins. Spins again, puts it up and in. Terry licked. Good move in the lane there for him. Give them back their 13-point lead. Right side for Acosta. Looking down low, can't really find anybody, so well, they tried to, well, they had a back door there. They didn't really get it to him, though. Fenley was open for the back door. Now Boyd misses that shot, but a foul, and two more coming for him. Well, again, for Boyd, it's just one of those days. He hasn't had too many of them like this one, but he just cannot get the ball to fall. Second on Snelling. So Boyd has now gone 0 for 11 from the field. As that one is good. So it's the free throw, though, to give him two points on the day. Actually, they still have him for, I think it's actually 0 for 12. But they haven't updated his shots in a while, I don't think, on the official stat sheet there. And that one no good. Rebound comes down. Jokic for Benedictine. Yeah, they didn't even put that miss up there. They still have 0 for 10. He was before that last shot. I think it's actually 0 for 12. But regardless, he's just had a rough day. Crane takes it away. And, well, did he walk after he got it? I think that's the case. So Eagles get it right back again. So fortunate there for Benedictine. And Jokic goes into green. He'll go baseline, and that's going to be a foul on Boyd. Should be a one in the bonus. Yep, that is the case for Nate Green. So 5.21 to go. That one good. So Green now with 15. And 16 as that one rattles on home. Benedictine now shooting 47% for the day. Elmhurst, 27%. They're 13 of 49 today. McCurdy's jumper, no. Rebound comes down to Benedictine. And they now lead in rebounds 35-32 after they were trailing in rebounds by about 10 in the first half. So Eagles have really taken charge of this game after a very slow start. And again, Green will spread it out, run clock, as we're inside five minutes. Now he'll drive. They spread it out. Oh, he misses the layup. Well, Licht almost had the rebound, but it was knocked away from him. Jays are on the run. McCurdy lays it up and in. McCurdy makes it back to a 12-point game again. 54-42, 4.30 to go. Tribble. And he'll drive, and they're going to get the bump foul on McCurdy, and that'll be five on him. So, well... Not much he could do about that one. And he's going to check out. So McCurdy is fouled out today. And with that, they bring back Deontay Foster in his place. Also, Nick Sanford back in the game for them, as is 
James Robertson is at free throw. No good. Rebound out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Well, is that a T on Cam Snelling? I think so. Well, and... Well, yep, they're going to call a T on Cam Snelling. Not quite sure what that argument was about because I don't think there was any doubt about that particular call. There just might have been collective frustration on Cam there that had been building throughout the game. But again, still close enough game where you're giving another team free points with a clock stop. That's not a good idea as that free throw is good by Robertson. And that one good. So it's now a 10-point game, plus they have the ball. And again, there's 4.22 to go. This scheme is not over yet by any stretch. Jays have not hit many shots today, but they hit a couple in a row, and guess what? They're right back in this thing. So Eagles are going to pick them up full length here. Inbounds comes to Boyd. Back now Foster. And they'll come front. Goes up Boyd. He'll take the 16-footer, miss another one. The rebound comes down to Benedictine. So, boy, oh boy. The rough day for Boyd continues as Green comes front. A.J. back now to Dario Jokic. Tribble takes the open three at the point, misses it. Rebound comes down to the Jays. Well, they get a basket here. Complexion of this thing changes a bit. Lob it underneath, knocked around, and out of bounds to Benedictine. Crane touched it last. Now Snelling back in. As coming out was Bernard. Wasn't in for very long as Snelling's rest didn't take long. Ten-point lead on the ball for the Eagles. Nate goes around a high pick, will drive middle, lost the handle, and Crane picks it up. Turnover. Again, back the other way, the Blue Jays. Boyd. Robertson. Free throw line, Crane. Little backdoor cut to Boyd, who lays it in, gets his first field goal today. He had missed his first 13 shots and makes that one. And again, it's a ball game now. It's an eight-point game with three minutes to go, and Benedictine calls time. Yep, their coach, Coach Punkenberg, not too happy that they've now opened the door to let that team back in. Full timeout will take one as well. 2.57 to play. It's an eight-point Benedictine lead, 54-46. We're back after this timeout. wasn't sure getting out of high school if I wanted to bowl in college, but after I graduated high school, I knew that there wasn't any way I was going to not be able to do it. So I'm glad that I came to Elmhurst because it gave me that chance. Last year was a good year, had the first winning record for the team. I really like being on the team. It brings a lot of people together and it makes it a lot easier to meet other people. We're with each other 24-7 on the weekends when we have tournaments and like three days a week for practice. And some of us work out together, go to dinner together. It's just, it's nice having those close friends to always fall back on if you need something and they're always willing to help. So just 2.57 remains, but just an eight-point lead now for Benedictine at 54-46. So if you're an Eagle fan, you need them to get a basket right here. Otherwise, things are going to get really interesting. Tribble. Looks for help in trouble. Finally, Brown. Then Crane knocks it out of there. Good hustle by Steve to dive and knock it away. Eagles will keep it, but they'll have it in the corner with just 13 on the shot clock. Jokic to bring it in. 
A.J. Brown back up to Nate Green. Ten on the shot clock. Near Green draws the contact and the foul. He'll shoot two. And with only four on the shot clock, nice job to just sort of make something happen there for Nate Green. But now they need to hit the shots. They want to keep their lead here without too much jeopardy. Now they're not going to allow all those substitutions right there. As Nate will take the first shot here. And the first one is no good. Again, free throw shooting wise. Benedictine right now. I think that makes him 9 of 19. That's a lot of points you're leaving on the floor there. We got that one, so 10 of 20, they're back to 50% there, and it's back to a nine-point lead. But Elmhurst, at this point, they can't have too many trips down the floor offensively that come up empty anymore. Boyd will drive. Free throw line, Crane. Now he'll go hard to the hoop, and he's fouled on the floor before the shot. So Crane... We'll go to the line. It's actually going to be a one and a bonus, I believe. Yep, that's the case. So, again, that was before the shot. So, Green at the line for a one and one with 2.18 to go. And Benedictine up 55-46. Now, that was the fifth foul on A.J. Brown. That's why Benedictine runs away from the foul line. They'll, they'll take their allotment of time before they make their substitution as Terry Licht will come in for A.J. Well, again, the numbers give Elmhurst credit for even still even being in this game. Considering they have shot 28% on the night, and they're just 2 of 13 from beyond the arc. The fact they're within 9 is actually one heck of an accomplishment. And it can be less than that, depending on what Crane does from the line here. And the free throw is no good in the rebound. Oh, wow, Blue Jays save it. That's a huge one for them. But now, again, they've got to come out of here with some points. Because they're using up some valuable time here. As Robertson's three is good, and now we really have a game on our hands. So a huge offensive rebound off the miss becomes three points, and now it's a six-point game, 55-49 with 1.52 to go. A lot can happen in this final. Well, now just about 90 seconds. Unbelievable. And Cam Snelling fouled by Acosta. And Cam Snelling will go to the line. That'll be four on him. And Cam to the line. It's a, it's a two-shot foul, super bonus. Again, as a team, they're 10 of 20 from the stripe today. And, well, that one wasn't pretty, but it goes in. So it's back by seven. See if he makes it eight. Got it. So Jays going to have to start thinking three now. They're only three out of 14, but at this point, Twos might not be enough as Boyd will take one and he hits it. How about that? Well, it's his second field goal of the day, but it's a huge three at a key time as it's a five-point game. Oh, good feet to Terry Lick for a layup. They ran the floor well and got two of those points right back. Seven-point lead for them with 1.15 to go. Crane, backdoor cut to Boyd, lays it up and in. Well, where has that offense been all day? They've got some open looks right there. 104 to go. They're back within five again. 59-54. It's a timeout. We'll keep it here with, again, 104 to go. Somehow you knew this was going to go down to the wire no matter what. It just, that's been this kind of a tournament, frankly. 
Both games last night went down to the wire. And even though the first game today didn't go down to the wire, it was sort of not decided until late, really. Again, Calvin took the consolation game earlier today. But that was a crazy one. Calvin was up 16, then they were down 7 before they turn around and win it big. Well, individually right now, Benedictine has 17 for Nate Green. 11 for A.J. AJ Brown, so he fouled out with his 11 points. Cam Snelling still doesn't have his double-double. He's got 9 points, 10 rebounds. Or she excuse me, 9 points, 12 rebounds. On the Elmhurst side. Well, they still don't have anybody in double digits which is pretty amazing. But Boyd has nine now. It's only three of 14 shooting, but he has nine to somehow lead his team. That's amazing. After that, eight for McCurdy. Robertson and Crane have seven. But again, they're still just shooting just 32%, but for them, that's the best they've been all day. Well, 46% for the Eagles, who have it now, with a five-point lead and a minute to go. And full-court pressure and almost a turnover there. But Cam Snelling snares it and finally finds Nate Green, who crosses into front court. Knocked away, but he just got it in time to avoid the 10-second count. And again, this is anybody's ball game now. 53.4 to go. Jokic up top to Licht. Jokic. Back up Licht, and he's fouled by Crane, and Terry Licht will go to the line. Again, super bonus for them the rest of the way. But again, the way they've been shooting free throws, you don't blame the Jays for fouling them. You figure you'll take your chances. Plus now, time's a waste in 48 seconds to go. You can't really let Benedictine run a lot of clock here anymore. There's the free throw is good by Terry Licht. And that one good as well. So he made them both. And now they get a little more breathing room now. Up seven with 47 seconds to go. It makes it a three-possession game. So those free throws were very big there. Boyd turned around and he hits it. So now he's eating up. Well, might be too little too late, but he's certainly making it interesting here. That's 61-56. So they tried to get the steal, but they got the reach-in foul. And 35 seconds to go in triple now. It'll be his turn to go to the stripe and see what he can do. The press almost got the turnover, though. Sixty-one fifty-six, Eagles. Tribble trying to add to that. And no good. So, now if you're the Eagles, you need to have this one. To make it a six-point game, two possessions of three. So he did get that. And Benedictine will call timeout. So it's back to a six-point lead with 35 seconds to go. And again, what that does is, again, two-possession game, but only if you're counting threes. So that means the Jays really have to come down and not waste much time, take and hit a three. Because if they don't, again... Benedictine can just run clock until they're fouled. And the potential to make it a three-possession game. So a two anymore for the Jays doesn't do them a whole lot of good. But the rebounds are actually dead even right now at 36 apiece. Turnovers, 14 for the Jays. 15 for the Eagles. So Benedictine. Let's see if they can get a stop here. Jays need a three. It's Boyd. Robertson, the quick catch and shoot. And I think the Eagles got a hand on it, which is why it was a key rebound for Cam Snelling there. Because if they let that go out of bounds, I think the Blue Jays would have gotten it back. But Snelling hustles, gets it, now goes to the line to shoot two the other end. And this is key here, 20.3 to go. 
He really only needs one because that makes it a three possession game. And three possessions with 20 seconds is awfully tough. And he got it there. So he gets his double double as well thanks to that free throw. So. That about wraps it up as that one is no good. But Elmhurst can't waste too much time. They got to hit a three and they got to do it in a hurry. Crane to Boyd. He'll take the long three, miss it. Rebound, battled four. And Eagles have possession. And oh, they're going to say jump ball. Tribble was waiting to be fouled. But it was a really smart job by the Jays to not foul. They get the jump ball, but bad luck for them because the arrow belongs to the Eagles anyway. So 4.2 seconds to go, and that'll be that. Although, the Jays are going to call timeout. Not quite sure what for. The seven points and 4.2, there's not a whole lot you can do with it, but, <laughs> well, again, it's always a learning situation, I guess you could say. And with conference action coming up, coaching down to the final whistle here today. So the Eagles are going to get the tournament championship, but again, they had to sweat it out thanks to the Eagles, or I should say thanks to the Blue Jays, just not giving up. They didn't shoot well today. And they're going to end up at least over 30%. But they really had a rough go today. Again, on Blue Jay TV tomorrow at 1. It's Elmhurst women's action here on the website. And Coach Scherer, give an instruction here down to the end. But Eagles are going to win it. They're up 63-56 with only 4.2 to go, plus they have the ball. And now we're ready to go, and they'll give Cam Snelling the ball. And... Terry Licht will get it, get it right back to Cam Snelling. He tried to get away before he got fouled, but Crane did get him. And so Terry Licht will go to the line, but 3.2 to go. So that was what the timeout was for. It was, again, talking about strategy in these late game situations. So it's all about execution. It may not matter today, but it might matter down the line. As Terry Licht will make the first one. Make it an eight-point game. Again, just about three seconds remaining. And that one good as well for Terry. So Eagles are going to win it. Blue Jays make it one final shot here. And nope, not even going to bother as Foster just puts the ball on the ground, and that'll be that. So Benedictine wins the championship 65-56 to here today at Elmhurst College. So not a grand start by Benedictine, but... Defense is what turned it around for them after that slow start as their defense created offensive chances and eventually took a lead that they would not relinquish here today. So let's give you the final team numbers first. Benedictine Fish finishes 21 of 46. That's 46% shooting on the day. 5 of 18 from beyond the arc. Not great, 28%. Again, free throws weren't all that great either. 18 out of 30, 60%, but they survived today. They had 15 turnovers to Elmhurst's 14. But again, the Jays shot just 32%, 19 of 59. Just 4 of 17 from long range, that's 24%. Their free throws, 14 of 20, so 70% there. As it turns out, Benedictine wins the rebound battle, 38-37. So close one there, but considering early in the game, they were being out-rebounded by about 10. Nice job by them to battle back and actually win that category. Individually for Benedictine, they ended up with four players in double digits. Nate Green ended up with 17 points today and eight rebounds and seven assists, five steals. What a game for Nate Green. That's astonishing. I'll give you those numbers again for Nate. 17 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, five steals. Great job by Nate Green today. After that, 13 points for Terry Licht. 11 points for A.J. Brown. 10 points, 12 rebounds for Cam Snelling today. After that, 
You go to six for Brian Genslinger, five for Jarrell Tribble, and three for Dario Jokic. Given the all-tournament team, Steve Crane on that list. Cam Snelling on that list as well. Nate Green, the MVP of the tournament. Well, those numbers we just gave you, no doubt about why he deserves that category. So MVP of the tourney is Nate Green. Now the team captain's going to be given the trophy. Individual numbers for Elmhurst today. They were led by Zach Boyd with 11 points. Rough day shooting, just 4 of 16, but 11 for him as there they have actually a, more of a plaque than a trophy but nevertheless the championship held aloft there by the team captain so again 11 for Boyd after his slow start didn't get his first point until almost midway through the second half I think but ends up with 11 a team best after that 8 for Mike McCurdy 7 for Steve Crane 7 as well for James Robertson 6 points for Bailey Barnett, six as well for Joe Acosta. And six, let's see, for Sean Fendley, too. And then you have to go all the way down to two points for Aaron Schrader and one for Deontay Foster. Their leading rebounder on the day was Boyd with six. And Crane also had six rebounds. But 65-56 is your final. Benedictine wins the championship earlier on today. And the consolation game, that one was won by Calvin. They beat DePaw 75-57. So that's the story here today. And I'm Mark Vasco. Thanks very much for being here today. Really appreciate you listening in and watching in basically on the webcast today. And again, don't forget tomorrow at 1, there'll be Elmhurst College women's basketball back here online. So that's our story today. Benedict Dean wins the Elmhurst Blue Jay Classic Tournament. Have yourselves a great day.